Okay, this is the listening from test number one from IELTS book number nine. Um, I haven't listened to this listening before, as is normal, so I'm going to be answering the questions at the same, uh, the same way that you are, and we'll go through the answers uh, at the end. So let's begin. Section one. You will hear a man phoning to inquire about a job vacancy. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Okay, that's obviously a number. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Okay, so they're showing you how the exam works. Let's skip that. King's rest. Good evening, King's Restaurant. Uh, good evening. I'm ringing about the job. I understand you have vacant. Oh yes. I'd like to find out a few more details, if I may. Yes, of course. Can I take your name? It's Peter Chin. Okay, Peter. Well, if you want to ask about the job, and then if we're both still interested, we could arrange for you to come for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. I'm afraid I missed the advert for the job, but heard about it from a friend. That's no problem at all. What would you like to know? Well, um, what sort of work is it? Washing up? It's answering the phone. Oh, right, fine. And not waiting at table. That'd be good. And how many nights a week would it be? Well, we're really only busy at the weekend. So two nights? Three, actually. So it would work out at twelve hours a week. That'd be fine. It wouldn't interfere with my studies. Are you at the university? Yes, first year physics student. Oh right. Um. And because I'm not an EU national, would I need a work permit? Yes, you would. Just get your tutor to sign it. That wouldn't be a problem if I were to get the job. Um, where exactly is the restaurant? Well, we have two branches. The one we're recruiting for is in Hillsdon Road. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, how do you spell it, please? It's H I L L S D U N N E. Road. Got that. Thanks. Is it near a bus stop? Yes. The nearest one would probably be just beside the library. Oh yes, I know it. That'd be fine for me. And could I ask about the pay? We're offering four pounds forty-five an hour. That's very good. My last job was three pounds ninety-five an hour. Before you hear the rest of the conversation. You have some time to look at questions five to ten. Okay, so work on the weekend, on Saturdays, on Sundays. Work late, we can assume, because you get transport home. What sort of qualities? The ability to do something. Okay. Will be a date, this one, and a surname here. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. We feel it's pretty good, and we also offer some good fringe benefits. Really? Well, we give you a free dinner, so you eat well. Right, better than hostel food. <laughs> we certainly hope so, and we also offer extra pay for working on national holidays. Oh, that's a really good perk, isn't it? Yes, we think so. And then, because of the difficulties of getting public transport, if you're working after eleven o'clock, we drive you home. Oh, that's good to know. Well, we'd certainly be interested in inviting you for an interview if you're still interested. Oh yes, certainly. Could I just also ask what qualities you're looking for? Well, for this particular job, we want a clear voice, which you obviously do have. <laughs> Thanks. And you must be able to think quickly, you know. Well, I hope I. So when could you come in for an interview? We're actually quite quiet tonight. 
Uh, sorry, I couldn't come tonight. Or tomorrow, I'm afraid. Uh, Thursday's okay. That'd be 22nd of October. Fine. After 5 p.m.? Yes, fine. Would 6 o'clock be okay? Perfect. And could you bring along the names of two referees? Yes, that's fine. No problem. Good. I look forward to seeing you. Oh, uh, by the way, who should I ask for? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. My name is Samira Manuja. Uh, can you spell that, please? M-A-N-U-J-A. Okay. I've got that. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you later on, then. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, if I'm quite comfortable about these answers, which I am, spelling-wise and, and grammar-wise, then I'm going to go straight down and just start working on these. If you're not comfortable, I would suggest spending some time just double-checking over there. Okay, so something about sports world. We don't know exactly why, who's talking, so we need to listen carefully. Um, I knew something of an international sports Now turn to section two. Section two. Center. You will hear part of a radio program about the opening of a new local sports shop. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. New local sports shop. We don't know yet, but they'll say something. Has sports, something, and equipment. Sports, clothing, perhaps, and equipment. Uh, can you get any item within... Okay, that's a number. School specializes in equipment for... Shop, sorry. Specializes in equipment for young people, old people, it's a group of people. And has a special section which just sells what? Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Now we go to Jane, who is going to tell us about what's happening in town this weekend. Right, thanks Andrew. And now on to what's new. And do we really need yet another sports shop in Bradcaster? Well, most of you probably know Sports World the branch of a Danish sports goods company that opened a few years ago. It's attracted a lot of custom, and so the company has now decided to open another branch in the area. It's going to be in the shopping centre to the west of Bradcaster, so that will be good news for all of you who found the original shop in the north of the town hard to get to. I was invited to a special preview, and I can promise you, this is the ultimate in sports retailing. The whole place has been given a new minimalist look with the company's signature colours of black and red. The first three floors have a huge range of sports clothing as well as equipment. And on the top floor, there's a cafe and a book and DVD section. You'll find all the well-known names as well as some less well-known ones. If they haven't got exactly what you want in stock, they promise to get it for you in 10 days unlike the other store, where it can take up to 14 days. They cover all the major sports, including football, tennis and swimming. But they particularly focus on running, and they claim to have the widest range of equipment in the country. As well as that, a whole section of the third floor is devoted to sports bags, including the latest designs from the States. If you can't find what you want here, it doesn't exist. Before you hear the rest of the programme, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Okay, so champion will be in the shop. Okay. Will win first, first person. Will win. Down here, which two is Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. The shop will be open from 9am this Saturday and if you go along to the opening then you'll have the chance to meet the national 400 metres running champion Paul King who's coming along to open the shop 
and he will be staying around until about midday to chat to any fans who want to meet him and sign autographs. Then there will be a whole range of special attractions all weekend. There will be free tickets for local sporting events for the first 50 customers and also a special competition open to all. Just answer 15 out of 20 sports questions correctly to win a signed copy of Paul King's DVD, Spring Tips, while the first person to get all the questions correct gets a year's free membership of the Bradcaster Gym. All entrants will receive a special sports calendar with details of all Bradcaster fixtures in the coming year. One of the special opening offers is a fitness test, a complete review of your cardiac fitness and muscle tone, actually done in the shop by qualified staff. This would normally cost £30, but is available at half price for this month only. There are only a limited number of places available for this, so to make a booking, phone 560-341. In addition, if you open an account, you get lots more special offers, including the chance to try out equipment at special open evenings. And that was one I, I didn't I didn't hear, but I think it's C. That is the end of section two. But we'll check. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay. Notice how sometimes these things you they come before you have to listen before the word fitness test comes in, so it's a bit tricky. Okay. Felt happy about his mark presentation. Now turn to section three. Section three. Two overseas students called Spiros and Hiroko have just finished the first semester of their university course. They are discussing with their English language teacher how they coped with the course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Okay, and uh, so notice that they're, they're talking to their tutor, so it's uh, something about university. Why is your feeling more positive now? Okay, to help understand. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Before we start, Spiros and Hiroko, thanks for coming in today to talk about your recent study experiences and congratulations to you both in doing so well in your first semester exams. Mm, thank you. I'd like to discuss with you the value of the English for Academic Purposes course you did here last year before starting your university course. Uh, Spiros, if I could start with you, what parts of the program have now proved to be particularly valuable to you? Um, I think that having to do a seminar presentation really helped me. Uh, for example, a couple of weeks ago in our marketing subject, when it was my turn to give a presentation, I felt quite confident. Of course, I was still nervous, but because I had done one before, I knew what to expect. Hmm. Also, I know I was well prepared, and I had practiced my timing. In fact, I think that in relation to some of the other people in my group, I did quite a good job, because my overall style was quite professional. What about you, Hiroko? Mm, that's interesting. In my group, I was really surprised by the way the students did their presentations. They just read their notes aloud. Can you believe that? They didn't worry about their presentation style or keeping eye contact with their audience. And I remember that these things were really stressed to us in the course here. So how did you approach your presentation, Hiroko? Well, to speak frankly, I read my notes too. <laughs> At the time, it was a relief to do it this way, but actually, when I had finished, I didn't feel any real sense of satisfaction. I didn't feel positive about the experience at all. That's a pity. You know, although I was pleased with my presentation, I am not so pleased with my actual performance right now in the tutorials. 
During the whole semester, I've not said anything in our tutorial discussions. Not a word. Really, Spiros? Why is that? Do the other students talk too much? It's partly that, but it's mostly because I have had no confidence to speak out. Their style of speaking is so different. It's not the style we were used to during the course. They use so many colloquialisms. They're not very polite, and sometimes there seems to be no order in their discussion. Also, they are very familiar with each other, so because they know each other's habits, they can let each other into the discussion. You're right, Spiros. I have experienced that too. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Okay, that's a tricky one. Let's have a look at these ones. Why is your feeling about questions 16? It's the last three. What does Spiros think of the reading students? Subject area and here it is. Reading class. Is now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Okay. For most of this semester, I've said absolutely nothing in tutorials. But recently, I've been trying to speak up more, and I just jump in, and I've noticed an interesting thing. I've noticed that if they thought my point was interesting or new, then the next time they actually asked for my opinion, and then it was much easier for me to be part of the discussion. Oh, that's great, Hiroko. I hope that happens for me next semester. I'll have to work hard to find some interesting points. What helped you to find these ideas? I think that one thing that helped me with this was the reading. I've had to do so much reading this semester just to help me make sense of the lectures. At first, I couldn't understand what the lectures were talking about, so I had to turn to the books and journals. Every night I read for hours using the lists of references that were given, and I made pages of notes. At breakfast, I read and read my notes again. This habit has helped me to follow the ideas in the lectures, and it's also given me some ideas to use in the tutorials. But I did so much reading anyway. I don't think there's any time left over for anything extra. My reading speed is still quite slow, though I'm much better at dealing with vocabulary than I used to be. What else do you think we could add to the course program to help with this reading problem? Hmm, uh, there's not really anything because it's my problem. I remember we were given long articles to read. We didn't like that, but now I realize that reading those long articles was good preparation for the things I need to read now. Also, uh, in class, we regularly had speed reading tasks to do, and we kept a record of our reading speed so the teachers were encouraging us to work on that. That's true, Spiros, but what we read could have been different. Sometimes in the English class, I felt frustrated when I had to read articles about the environment or health or education, because I wanted to concentrate on my own field, but we didn't read anything about engineering. So I think I wasted some time learning vocabulary I didn't need. Mm, but surely the strategies you were taught for dealing with that vocabulary were helpful? Yes, but psychologically speaking, I would have felt much better working on reading from my own field. Mm. What do you think, Spiros? Oh, I agree. That would have helped my confidence too, and I would have been more motivated. It was good, though, that we could work on our own topics when we wrote the research assignments. Okay. Let's move on to writing now. Okay. <clears throat> now we've got something about... Dolphins and whales. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, and we're going to just try and find some collocations or grammar that can help us here. So, common areas where the mm can change quickly. Tide might be. This is the movement of the water up and down based on the moon. Um, parasites. Some parasites can affect man, man, mean animals. And this is a possessive thing. So. Parasites can affect their ears, perhaps. They depend on for navigation, so I don't know exactly, but probably ears. Poisons from something or something. I'll now turn to section no four. So it's going to be some sort of animals or plants. Section four. You will hear part of a lecture 
about a problem related to the behaviour of certain sea creatures. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. To 40, so let's carry on going. Um, animals might follow prey ashore, unlikely because the majority of them were not, were not strand when they were they were not near the shore, near the shore when they were stranded. Mm, because they were unlikely there. Uh, from military tests, mm, something from military tests linked to some recent strandings. Oh, activity from military tests, uh, t bombing. The whales were all, they were not in R. Maybe a group, it's called a pod, a pod of whales, but we're not sure. And these last ones here, most running the most, in the most, mm, something of whales, okay. Double running only. Only that we was ill. Okay, we don't now know. listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, with some of you about to go out on field work, it's timely that in this afternoon's session I'll be sharing some ideas about the reasons why groups of whales and dolphins sometimes swim ashore from the sea right onto the beach and, most often, die in what are known as mass strandings. Unfortunately, this type of event is a frequent occurrence in some of the locations that you'll be travelling to, where sometimes the tide goes out suddenly, confusing the animals. However, there are many other theories about the causes of mass strandings. The first is that the behaviour is linked to parasites. Okay, it's often found that stranded animals were infested with large numbers of parasites. For instance, a type of worm is commonly found in the ears of dead whales. Since marine animals rely heavily on their hearing to navigate, this type of infestation has the potential to be very harmful. Another theory is related to toxins or poisons. These have also been found to contribute to the death of many marine animals. Many toxins, as I'm sure you're aware, originate from plants or animals. The whale ingests these toxins in its normal feeding behaviour, but whether these poisons directly or indirectly lead to stranding and death seems to depend upon the toxin involved. In 1988, for example, 14 humpback whales examined after stranding along the beaches of Cape Cod were found to have been poisoned after eating tuna that contained saxitoxin, the same toxin that can be fatal in humans. Alternatively, it has also been suggested that some animals strand accidentally by following their prey ashore in the confusion of the chase. In 1995, David Thurston monitored pilot whales that beached after following squid ashore. However, this idea does not seem to hold true for the majority of mass strandings because examination of the animal's stomach contents reveal that most had not been feeding as they stranded. There are also some new theories which link strandings to humans. A growing concern is that loud noises in the ocean cause strandings. Noises such as those caused by military exercises are of particular concern and have been pinpointed as the cause of some strandings of late. One of these, a mass stranding of whales in 2000 in the Bahamas, coincided closely with experiments using a new submarine detection system. There were several factors that made this stranding stand out as different from previous strandings. This led researchers to look for a new cause. For one, all the stranded animals were healthy. In addition, the animals were spread out along 38 kilometres of coast, whereas it's more common for the animals to be found in a group when mass strandings occur. A final theory is related to group behaviour and suggests that sea mammals cannot distinguish between sick and healthy leaders and will follow sick leaders even to an inevitable death. This is a particularly interesting theory since the whales that are thought to be most social, the toothed whales, are the group that strand the most frequently. The theory is also supported by evidence from a dolphin stranding in 1994. 
Examination of the dead animals revealed that, apart from the leader, all the others had been healthy at the time of their death. Without one consistent theory, however, it is very hard for us to do anything about this phenomenon except to assist animals where and when we can. Stranding networks have been established around the world to aid in rescuing animals and collecting samples from those that could not be helped. I recommend John Connor's Marine Mammals Ashore as an excellent starting point if you're interested in finding out more about these networks or establishing one yourself. Stranding networks. This that is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. OK, it'll be half a minute and then you have a whole ten minutes to transfer these answers over to your answer sheet. So this is a great chance again for you to check your spelling and check your grammar. So the most social, not uh, socially, because that's, an, uh, that's a noun, obviously, and that should be an adjective, etc, etc. So you're checking your spelling as well as your grammar at this point. Okay, so now we're going to check the answers. Uh, the answers, as well as this document itself, can be found in the comments section of this uh, of this film. Okay, so let's just check the answers. I'll change the color here so it's clear what I've changed. Remember, one of them, I'm not so sure about the rest. I'm pretty confident I've got them all. Okay, so the first one, answering the phone. Um, you can also say answer phone according to the answer sheet. That's also correct. Um, then you've got Hills Dunn Road. Don't forget you need to put the word road. You can put the whole road or you can put RD. Both of them are acceptable. Uh, next one, Library. Uh, 445, that's correct. Then we've got National Holidays, which is correct. After 11, uh, you can use PM or you can use o'clock. Um, it is implied that it's in the evening, but if you put 11, just 11, that's also acceptable. Um, you need a clear voice, which is fine. Think quickly, which is fine. And the 22nd of October, which is fine. You can also, you don't need to put the ND. 22 October is fine. Um, Manuja is how you spell it. Okay, good. Now let's go down here. We've got the word branch, a branch of the sports company. Um, that one they mentioned twice, but I uh, was it's it's a bit tricky when you're starting a new section. Um, I understand why it can be a bit tricky if it's starting a new section. You don't know where you're going to start. Um, this sometimes they give you a, a point beforehand with no question that is required, and then you say, "Okay, I've, that's done. I'm ready for the next one." But this one it's a little bit trickier. Okay, West, that's fine, and clothing we have now 10 days beforehand, running is correct, and you don't need to say sports bags, but bags is enough. Okay, now we've got um, the champion athlete. Uh, the, the keyword here is midday, so obviously he can only be there um, for the morning, so that's correct. And then 18... Um, Initially, I thought it was DVD. She's mentioned DVD, but it was the first person. So it's so important to underline the keywords in the question itself. And that's why uh, 18A is correct. Now, this one was the one that I got uh, confused about. So let's have a look. Number 19, the first answer is A. Ah, uh, and it's cheaper this month. So let's just listen to that, uh, that bit there. Sorry. Section two. Section two. So that will be less well-known ones. If they haven't got exactly what you want in stock, they promise to be free tickets for local sporting events for the first 50 customers. And also, questions correct, gets a year's free membership of the Bradcaster Gym. Okay, so there we are. Now we're listening carefully. All entrants this. will receive a special sports calendar with details of all Bradcaster fixtures in the coming year. One of the special opening offers is a fitness test. A complete review of your cardiac fitness and muscle tone, actually done in the shop by qualified staff. 
This would normally cost thirty pounds, but is available at half price for this half month only. Price, so only there are pounds. only a limited number of places available for this, so to make a booking, for okay, and there's limited limited number to make a booking. Obviously, the word re reserve. So I haven't got nine for my IELTS. I've got so far eight point five. You need to have complete one hundred percent to get a nine. Okay, so let's see if I can do better now as a native speaker. 21, B is correct. His style was good. It wasn't the best in the group. He did say, some of them I thought I was better, but not the best, implying he's imp uh, better than everybody else. Okay, number 22, they didn't look at the audience enough. They were reading from their notes. Uh, 23, B, she was dissatisfied. Um, because she did exactly the same. She said it didn't like the fact that people were looking at their notes and she did exactly the same, so she was dissatisfied. Uh, 24 is A, he's not very happy. Uh, 25 is C, the, they didn't agree. Because they knew each other well, they did take turns in speaking, but it wasn't a, a set agreement like sat down and said, okay, if, if I start talking, you must keep quiet and vice versa. So C is the correct one here. 26 is B, because uh, she's making more of a contribution. She does get included in discussion, but the tutor herself or the tutor himself is not explicitly including her in the discussion. Uh, it's just what happens because she was making a better contribution beforehand. 27 is A, she consulted, she spoke about reading and reading and reading. Uh, then we go to 28, what does Spiros think of his reading gil skills? It still takes him a long time to read. He he does mention that uh, something was better. Yes, he his new vocabulary is getting better. It's not talking about his speeding his reading speed. So we have B is correct. Uh, Twenty nine is C. She mentions the word engineering and thirty. Uh, yeah, she wanted people to. She wanted the English classes, reading classes in English to focus on the her subject rather than very general subjects. Okay, then we've got to the whales, which um, which did well. If you had S, that's also acceptable according to the answer sheet here. Um, ears, you can also have just ear, that's acceptable, the animal's ear, because it's a general word, so the S is not necessary. And you could also put hearing here, and that's also acceptable. Uh, now, 20, uh, 33, you need both of them, so you need plants and you need animals. And they do also mention fish and fishes, even though scientifically it's a rather scientific use of the English, that's acceptable. Now we go to 34, and that is feeding, which is fine. Sorry, that's not supposed to be there, feeding. Now we've got the last few, so 35 noises. If you had only noise, that's also acceptable because it's general. Then healthy is correct. Group, a group of whales, by the way, you might see it in reading, is called a pod. Uh, also a group of dolphins. Uh, now 38, social is correct. And a leader is correct. Only the leader. So they use the word apart from the leader, everyone else was healthy suggesting um, that the leader of the group was was ill and the last one is network you don't need to put an s there if you just had network that would also be correct so i hope that helped you and um, i'll also be uploading a reading from ielts book number nine uh, test number one so have a look out for that as well